Okay, so a couple tools that I use to measure CCT and, and tint and all that with my flashlights are the LSP Evo app, which you'll see a link in the corner here if you want to see a video about that. That's a little app that runs on your iPhone or your Android, and it just uses the light meter built into the camera to kind of spit out some numbers. I find it quite accurate if you have a good quality phone and you use a good quality source like uh, to bounce it off of, like a good color card or something like that, not just, you know, your your off white walls i find that causes problems but uh, you can check that video out as i said the link is right there but here's another way and it's the opal the opal the uh, lightmaster pro there's a couple opals and they all seem to be you know pretty decent this one was uh 20 bucks on aliexpress uh, i'll drop a link into the description below who knows how long that link will be valid but uh, take a look for opal it comes in a little box like this you open it up and uh, there's this little guy inside, this little module looking thing, and um, that's pretty much it. There's pretty much no instructions. You have to get the app. Um, I believe that there was, let's see here. Yeah, there's like a little QR code. You can scan this QR code and it'll take you to the app on your respective app store. Make sure that you charge this thing up to full once you get it. It's got a little micro USB there. And um, mine was completely dead when I got it. Now, to turn it on, what you do is you push, and it slides out like that, and it starts flashing a little white thing there in the corner saying it needs to be paired. In your app, hit the little plus and pair. If this looks a little strange on my iPad, I mean, this is an iPhone app, and I just have it on my iPad because I'm recording with my iPhone, so um, some the screen might look a little weird. It's, it looks way better on the phone. And it's saying, hey, has it gone solid white? It has. So I say, yes, continue. I've got it paired. We're good to go. I can hit start. So right now it is measuring lux and it's measuring color tint. And it says the color tint of the room is about 4,800, which sounds good to me because my panels are set to 5,000. These panels are not that, that accurate. These are those $20 uh, Yaya Mia panels that we've been talking about on Reddit. They're, they're pretty solid. But anyways, uh, 5,000 sounds good to me. All right, let's turn a couple of these panels off and go through these lights here. And I know what emitters are, all, are in all of these lights so we can see how it works. So let's uh, turn this panel off and this one as well. Okay, I still have uh, a light on over in the corner there, but it's uh, pretty far away, so I don't think it'll mess too much. If it does, I will kill it. But uh, this light right here, one, two, three, four, um, this is Nietzsche SW45K, so let's aim it right at it. Now notice how it goes uh, to lines here. That means it's too bright. I've exceeded the luck, so i got to back it up. So back, 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 back it up, and it'll start reading and let it settle, and there you go. So it's reading yeah, about 45K. Now notice sometimes it gets closer, sometimes it's further away from the true value. Uh, that depends on my beam, right? Because there's tint shift. So if I'm in the hot spot, I'm going to read differently than if I'm in the you know kind of corona here of it. But you can see that um, you know 45k. What's what I'm getting? It's got an RA value, and if you swipe, it's got a little uh, chart here that shows where the emitter is falling off of the black body locus, and you can see it's below BBL. This is a rosy emitter. Cool. Let's take a look at another one. This one here is E21A at 3,500. So let me swipe back. Yeah, there you go, 3,500. That's what we expected. High CRI, and it's a little bit below BBL, a little bit, uh, which is to be expected. E21A is, this one is a Nietzsche 209C at 3,000, there we go, and there you go, 3,000, and uh, as we know, Nietzsche 209C is not as high CRI as the 219B, and you can see that it's on the BBL, and it's on because I added a crap ton, that's a technical term, of minus green to get it so. This thing was a very green emitter and I didn't like it. Put a bunch of uh, minus green on there and, and now it's kind of right on the line. 
And next up, XPL high, 5,000K. All right. And let's see here. And by the way, this thing's reading a little less than 5,000K. I find that is true. That's what I find with the LSP Evo as well. As I ramp up, I ramp up and pull the light up, you'll see it cools off a little bit and then it hits the 5,000K that it's claimed to be. And also you can see over here that, um, well, actually this says it's, it kind of looks like it's on the line, but I know that this is actually above BBL. It's a little greenish. There we go. I mean, it bounces all around depending on, you know, again, depending on where you are, where you angle this thing, because it's, you're, you're shining it right out there. And if you're in the edge of the beam versus the center of the beam, that's going to make a difference. But, um, you, you can see that it's, uh, above BBL there. And then... This guy here, this is a custom mix of, um, I'm trying to get it, yeah, can't really get exposure on that, huh? Let's try this. Does that work? Uh, the monkey, you kind of see it. These are 6,500 K E21As and 2,000 K E21As. Uh, interesting mix. And this thing uh, is pretty rosy. So you can see how far below BBL it is on the chart there. And uh, you can see this thing's around. Let's see, let me hold it still. Uh, it's moving all around. This is around 4,000K. Come up a little high bit here. Yep, just, just below 4,000K. Sounds about right. High CRI over in the corner there. And um, what did I do? I rotated this, huh? Burp. I rotated it. Um, so that's pretty much what I'm going to show you. So this is a pretty easy product to use. Uh, you just kind of aim it out there. You don't need a color chart or anything. It gives you pretty consistent values. Um, oh, one other thing, this flicker. This is kind of neat. Um, what they're using it for is for like headaches. But I found that it's pretty good at detecting a PWM in the driver. So for example... If I start here, oh, whoops, I didn't have the light on it, my bad. Let me try this again, okay. So let me come to a low level here, and kind of blast it, hit start, it's gonna read, and watch this, data. You see that line there? There's no PWM at all, why? This is a constant current driver right now. Uh, it's a nine amp driver in here, and you can see that there's no PWM, However, if I go to, for example, my Dr. Jones driver in the Hanko, start, you will see that there is PWM, and it's really fast. It's very quickly. Uh, it's at about uh, 16K, and that's what the Dr. Jones is advertised as. Let's do another one. Let's do... <laughs> Let's do... I think this thing has a FET driver. Let's, let's try it. Okay, hang on. And there you go. And there you go. So you can see the PWM. Um, gosh, I had some better ones earlier. Well, let me just try this as low. Let me try it really low like that. This is the Dr. Jones. I just want you to see a different. There you go. There's some really, really visible PWM because I had it so low. So that's kind of cool. I mean, and you got, uh, you know, the frequency too. And I do notice that when the Dr. Jones is really low like this, I can actually see the modulation, and it makes sense because it's uh, it's kind of uh, kind of chunky. All right, uh, I think that wraps it up. So this is a cool little thing, cool little doohickey here for twenty bucks. I still find myself using LSP Evo a little more often, but it's great to get a second opinion with this. And, um, you know, my eyes are pretty good at picking out CCTs. I hardly ever have to go to these, but I really like these kinds of devices for really spotting if it's above or below BBL. And since this app doesn't do, in my opinion, as good of a job at quantifying whether it's above and below, because these values don't make as much sense to me, um, they're not giving me the DUV that I want, that kind of uh, aggregated number. 
So, and then the graph, I can't really zoom in on it or anything. So it's kind of hard to see. So I still like LSP Evo where it gives me a tint number and a little slider, but that's just me. All right. Hope that you found that interesting and uh, another cool little cheap tool for us enthusiasts to use with our flashlights.